Father, for heaven's sake, what is this? Huh? Night after night. Scribbling as if you've got the very devil in you. I've got the devil in me. Or worse. <laughs> My father, this doesn't sound like you at all. This man. This fantastic man. I tell you, he's under my skin. They say he hypnotized half the world. I swear to you, he's got me hypnotized too. What man? That man, that mind menacing mammal, that Cagliostro. Oh, Cagliostro. The 18th century charlatan. Was he a charlatan? I don't know. I've written books. Pages enough to paper the walls of the Paris Opera House. Characters enough to fill a regiment. The Count of Monte Cristo, the Corsican brothers, the three musketeers, Porthos, Athos, Aramis, Chico, the jester, D'Artagnan. But I wrote them. This man's writing me. All right, all right. When I left the opera, I thought I was going peacefully to bed. But I inflicted my novel, Camille, on you last week. Now, what was this fellow, Cagliostro? How in the name of all the saints would I know? Devil. Montebank. Fool. I'm still wondering. But his real name was Joseph Balsamo. His mother and father were gypsies. It is in the south of France that we first hear of him. Joseph's mother seems to have had a genuine gift of clairvoyance. At a gypsy fair, she looked into the eyes of a farmer's baby and foretold its illness. A few days later, the baby died, and Joseph and his parents were brought to trial before the prefect of the district, the Vicomte de Montaigne. The charge was that Joseph's mother was a sorceress and that all three were disciples of the devil. She's the witch that murdered our boy, Excellency. No. Lying, murdering gypsies. That's what they be. Chico. He never had a sick day in his life, my lord, till she looked at him with those wicked eyes. You're sick, she says. You're very sick. And my grandchild died. It's a lie. My mother had nothing to do with it. She did not, my lord. Highness, Excellency, if you would let me speak. Maria never hurt a soul. She's a mother herself. It's just she has a sort of sick sense, which told her this baby felt sick. The baby never had a sick day in his life. If I could be allowed to speak. Father, these people cause nothing but trouble with their devil's practices. Devils have been the business of the church ever since the fall of Lucifer. There have been cases of clairvoyance, second sight. There's no such thing. Then how can you explain the visions of the prophets? The prophets weren't gypsies, Father. I find no evil in this home. I said I've heard enough. It's none of your business. Fair woman, the bailiff will give you two pieces of silver. Raise another child and keep it away from such as these. And as for the gypsies, hang them both. You won't hang my mother. Not my mother. No. My Take this pity, Excellency. As a priest, I must ask... As a prefect, I must ask you to hold your tongue. Hang them both! Why, you... I'm probably contracted rabies. Bailey, put him on the whipping post. If he survives the whipping... No! No! Put out his eyes! Still conscious. Are you ready? Yes. Joseph! 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 
Those things are best forgotten, Judith. No, I want to remember as long as I live. And that man's name, De Montaigne, the Vicomte de Montaigne. There's no time for remembering now. Jacob, cover him. You'll be changing the car. After that, very little is known, except that the boy, Joseph, grew up into an insolent, devil-may-care vagabond. When we next hear of him, he was in Vienna with the Gypsy Caravan, presenting a show that was a mixture of black magic and fake cure-alls. Ladies and gentlemen, and fellow sufferers, the great Balsamo is again ready for you! Nefter Shufu, a thousand blessings. From the darkness beyond night, from the forbidden mountains on the secret side of the moon, behold. A wonder among wonders. We come not here to trade or gather wealth. For friends, what use is money without help? Ladies and gentlemen, the elixir of life! The elixir of life! Vitaminicus, Balsumicus, Rejuvenatus! Bottled by me alone in the fountain of youth, deep in the jungles of Hispaniola! The elixir of life! One bottle for the paltry charge of a silver shilling. Which one of you here is so racked with pain that life has lost its smile? Elixir, only one shilling. One shilling, please. Elixir of life. The easy way to live, Doctor. Mm. A shilling for a bottle of colored water. And the faculty of medicine won't accept my theories for nothing. You're not flamboyant enough. Elixir of life, one shilling. What bug proof do you need? Oh, you lucky people. Give me a shilling. Here's a shilling. Please, you have to sell me a bottle. Sorry, that's the lesson. Oh, just one. You got just one for my mother. Here. I pay double. Are they all gone? Five shillings then. Five shillings? We can pass up five shillings. Um, hey, get one more bottle. Here is one. Here is one. Hey! Hey, I'm feeling. <laughs> All right. I got one, Mama. Oh, here it is, Mama. It's not all at once. You're not as sick as that. Mama, what is it? Mother. Mama, Mama what, what is it? Mama. Mama. Mama, what is it? Mother. They poisoned her. Mother. I feel that woman drank lamp fluid by mistake. Oh, Frauta was quick. You're the only one that can do it. Mama. Mama. Oh. No. Something's going on. Oh, the pain. Listen to me. You have nothing to fear, nothing to fear. You drink too much of the elixir in one dose. It's very powerful but harmless. The pain you feel is going to last only a moment or two. Already you can feel it going. You can feel the pain going. Tell me you can feel the pain leaving. It's gone. You see, I told you I had nothing to fear. The pain you felt is gone completely. There, ladies and gentlemen, you can see she's perfectly all right. What kind of hocus pocus was that? I don't quite know, but it's very interesting, Hocus Pocus. Hey, somebody stole my watch! Oh, what? Dirty what? What? gypsies! Thieving gypsies! Dirty <laughs> gypsies, that's a little song for a penny! Dirty gypsies! Leave! Come on, come on, gypsies, come on!
uh, what else do you remember? His eyes. They seemed like saucers, commanding me to be well. Remarkable. It is lamb fluid. And she must have drunk enough of it to sicken her for a week. Well, what do you make of that, Doctor? The power over the mind, Gunther. This man is a natural born hypnotist. This way, Doctor. Here they are. You are. Yeah, right. All right. You are Dr. Balsamo. Uh -huh. And you are? Yeah. Gitano. Yeah, just Gitano. Never knew the rest of it myself. <laughs> Who are you? I'm a doctor of the Viennese Faculty of Medicine. My name is Franz Anton Mesmer. Oh, I don't need a doctor. <laughs> Do you need a doctor? Do you need a doctor? Gentlemen, we don't need a doctor. If you escape, it will cost me We don't need a doctor to escape. And we escape. You are released. <laughs> released on bail on my own personal security and on your honor. Honor? Doctor, you flatter us. Joseph Balsamo had captured the interest of Dr. Mesmer, who was striving in vain for the scientific recognition of his great discovery, the curative powers of hypnotism. Joseph, without knowing it, for years, you have been practicing hypnotism. Hypnotism? Yes. I never even heard of the word. <laughs> Very few have. <laughs> but it's an art which was forgotten when the world grew old. Tell me, Joseph. Are there many more amongst your people who've got that power of, of healing? My mother had it. Yes? I said she was a witch, so they hanged her. You loved her very deeply. Why talk about it? Because I think that from a strong bond of love and sympathy, you've inherited those magnetic powers. Now this afternoon, that woman, with fire consuming her throat, she was in agony until you told her Everything was well, and looked into her eyes, and the pain passed. This is only in her mind. But most of the illnesses in this world start in the mind. Joseph, and that is where hypnotism comes in. I don't know how far that power in you is developed. But I think that you can do much more than I ever dreamed of. Wait. By this time, Joseph was thinking and wondering if these things Dr. Mesmer was saying could be true. His cunning gypsy mind was already starting to weigh the possibilities. My dear madam, forgive me for kept you waiting so long. Please do come into the study. I'm very glad you have decided to come at last. Ah, oh. how am I? Can't you see that by yourself? I'm shaking to pieces before your eyes. The Baron from Minden is suffering of palsy. I say, who, who, who is this, this fellow? This is my new assistant, Joseph Balsamo. I think he can cure you. He, he looks like a thief. Yes, but you must look into his eyes. Look into his eyes. He, he's got the eyes of a thief. Self-assured, as always, Joseph was ready to try anything once. What had he to lose? What's wrong with him? I'm shaking, can't you see it? I'm full of pain, full of ills. How dare you get... Sit down, sit down. Be quiet. Look me in the eyes. Forget your palsy. Your palsy. New life. New life. He's coursing up your limbs, up your arms, up your legs. New life. New life. New life. Your head stopped shaking already, Baron. You can feel new life stealing up through your legs, through your arms, down your hand. They are shaking less and less and less and less until they're absolutely still, still. See for yourself. They are still. 
They are still. Uh, they're still look at the mesmer. I, I'm cured. Yes. I'm cured. Thanks to this remarkable fellow. Here's 500 crowns in this purse. We don't want this kind of payment. <laughs> nonsense. Nonsense. <laughs> if there is anything else you want, just let me know. Just let me know. Have you convinced yourself? Well, if it would work on him, it might work on anybody. Anybody. Is it a partnership? What's there in it for me? The gratitude of generations unborn. Joseph, no faculty of medicine will give us a hearing. None. But you and I, we can conquer man's greatest enemy, himself. Well, it can't be hard to make such a decision. Oh, I've made my decision. Good night. I knew I could count on you. I must get home and show what this remarkable fellow has done for me. Thank you, thank you, Joseph. Joseph had decided. And now he was thinking, if this power could work with the Baron, it would work with others. And the Baron had paid 500 crowns. A remarkable fellow. My very best to the Baroness. Good night, Baron. Yes, yes, good night. Joseph! 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 waiting for you, darling, for hours. Now, what's happened, Joseph? What, what kept you there so long? The gypsies are going south, Joseph, into Italy. It will stay, it may cost us our We're next. not staying. Our next, and Joseph. We're not going south either. No, we're mean? starting over again. And not with a carnival and colored water, but with a carriage and silks and laces and a flood of gold coins. Where did you get that? You think I stole it? <laughs> I earned it. Earned it? Oh, is he sick, Gitano? Are you sick? No, oh, oh, I'm not sick, but half the world is. What are you getting at, Joseph Balsamo? <laughs> Joseph Balsamo, no. That was good enough for a gypsy carnival faker, but not for one who will be known as the world's greatest wonder worker. A healer possessed of supernatural powers, divine, godlike. <laughs> oh, look. The stars, far out in space, there's a great comet. My mother told me of it. The swiftest comet in the skies. It's called Cagliostro. That night, Joseph Balsamo was dead because Count Cagliostro had just been born. Cagliostro, the eyes that streaked across Europe like a meteor. Cagliostro, the healer, the legend. Wherever he went, the cripples, the maimed, the blind would flock in their thousands to meet him, to speak with him, to touch the hem of his cloak as he passed. Soon his name had become a byword as he traveled through the great cities of Europe. The magnificent Charlotte, playing on hysterical faith and emotional instability, taking full advantage of his little-known gift of hypnotism to sell himself as a god. They cheer you or lash you to death. It's the same emotion. Sometimes I feel we are walking across the world on a tightrope. Don't worry. I won't fall off. I know how to keep my balance. Impelled by memories of his youth, Cagliostro dared to come back again into France. Doctor! Call yourself a doctor? Get out! I say get out! There must be a real doctor in this filthy village. Doctor? Doctor? But here's the doctor. He's the famous doctor, the Count de Cagliostro. You're a doctor? You look more like a fortune teller or a mountebank to me. Well, sir, appearances are notoriously deceptive. For example, you look rather... Rather like a gentleman. And no offense, man. My services as a doctor are at your disposal. Perhaps you'd better show me your patient. Well, follow me. It seemed that fate had brought about this unexpected meeting with this man of hated memory, the Vicomte de Montaigne. There she is, on the bed. She has been lying like that for hours. Mm. 
Well, well, get on with your business. Was it shock? I see that's none of my business. I must ask you to leave me alone with my patient. Well... Be quick about it. Cagliostro sensed that this lovely girl was a victim of sudden shock and terror. trying to save you. You can talk to me as if you were speaking words within your own soul. Now you may sleep. 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 I want you to remember all the events which led you coming to this inn. Tell me everything. It was at Strasbourg. There was great excitement in the city. Princess Marie Antoinette and her husband, Prince Louis, were staying in the town after a visit to her native Austria. I had driven in with my chaperone, hoping to catch a glimpse of them. But suddenly, a man rode up to our carriage. Beg your pardon, ladies. My mistake. Later, I learned that his name was Chambord, and that he was in the employ of the Vicomte de Montaigne. Obviously, he had mistaken me for someone else. And then, a young officer made the same mistake. Really, Your Highness, this makes it very difficult for us to protect you. I beg your pardon. Look here, young man. We don't know who you are, nor what you are talking about. Oh, we'll forgive him, Amelia. Especially since you're the second man in the last two minutes who's made the same mistake. I... I'm sorry, madame. Deeply sorry. My eyes must be playing tricks. I'm the Chevalier Gilbert de Rancenne, captain in the King's Guard. At your service, ladies. That afternoon, Gilbert took us to the palace gardens again, where the prince and princess were to appear. You know, I'm still very curious about this woman who looks like me. In fact, I even think I'm getting jealous. Many women are jealous of her, mademoiselle. Do you love her? Well, I'm devoted to her, mademoiselle. I give my life for her. Oh, stop pretending and tell me who she is. See for yourself. Myself as Marie Antoinette. She's the future Queen of France. 
then as one of the court officers assigned to protect her highness i'm forgiven for keeping my secret oh yes I know I need have no fear of any princess. Nor of any queen. Keep very still, please. What in blazes? Tell me, did you hear anything of what use they proposed to make of your resemblance to the princess? Anything at all? Only that someone in Paris... Someone in Paris. Some high personage. Some high personage. Some plot. Hmm? That's right. Sleep. Sleep like the dead, till I, and only I, awaken you. Intrigue, Hitano. Big affairs of state. And this girl holds the key to it. Joseph, you don't mean to help this de Montaigne, the man who hanged your father and mother. He's conspiring to reach new heights of power through this girl. I'll help him, Gitano. The higher he climbs... I called you to save her. I can. If you will only leave her under my care... That's impossible. Then she will die. Then she will die, and you will never be able to make use of this extraordinary... the resemblance. Resemblance? To whom? Marie Antoinette. This man would be safer dead. If I die, she dies too. And I assume you are eager to make use of this likeness with some profit to yourselves. Hmm? Why should I trust you? Because we have one thing in common. We are both men of very high ambitions and we need each other to fulfill them. What do you suggest? Let her travel with me to Paris to continue her treatments. The charge for my immediate services will be 5,000 francs. Pay him Chambord. Here. And how much more for the care of the girl? An introduction to the court of Louis XV. Presentation at court is no easy matter. Even for a visiting nobleman with proper credentials. Where are yours? In the power of my mind, Vicon. And I cannot guarantee complete recovery for a patient unless my fee is paid. In full. Well, I can only promise to do my best. Where's the innkeeper? In the tap room, sir. It's Chevalier de Rancenne, my lord. He's just ridden into the courtyard. You mustn't find us here. Get the coaches ready at once. You can't have Zaida. Thank you, sir. I hope. Oh, good evening, sir. sir I'm, I'm searching for a young lady who was injured while traveling this road. Oh, we have such a young lady. Yes, she's in the care of the famous doctor. Chica, the courtyard, quick. Are the inn gates open and our carriage ready? We're leaving for Paris. They're all gone, sir. Yes, I went first to the doctor's apartment and then to the room occupied by the sick young lady. But by that time, I heard them driving away. I've got to overtake them.
Your horse isn't fit to ride, sir. His leg's badly cut, sir. He wasn't limping when I rode him in. Sometimes they don't limp until they've stood a while. Looks like he might have picked up a bit of broken glass on the road. Or the edge of someone's knife, huh? Give me some bandage for him. Yes, my lord. And so Cagliostro came to Paris, taking that world center of power, wealth, and cynical culture by storm. Now his acclaim eclipsed anything he had known. Cagliostro, in spite of the scorn and contempt of the Paris doctors who denounced him as a charlatan, was finding the streets of Paris indeed paved with gold. Moscow, Warsaw, Vienna. And now Paris. Mm. Are you content, Joseph? The world is at your feet. They cheer me because they hope to get something for nothing. A few of them will. <laughs> but most of them won't. <laughs> you can't come in here. Let go of me. Oh, my face. Count Calustro. Christ, killer. Chevalier, these men can throw a knife through the eye of a needle. However, since you've uh, forced your way in, what is your ailment? Where's Lorenzo? Lorenzo? The girl you attended on the road to Paris. I know she left the inn with you. Well, you should know that as a doctor, I uh, cannot discuss my patients. And she is here! Please! Don't make us be rough, Chevalier. This is a new carpet. It may interest you to know that I believe this lady was abducted from Strasbourg as part of some conspiracy. As captain of the palace guards, it's my duty to report my suspicions to the minister of security, the Vicomte de Montaigne. I'm sure Montaigne will take a most sympathetic interest. Good night, Chevalier. Good night. A very turbulent young man. I'll see nobody tonight, nobody. Joseph! Don't go to her, Joseph. I love you. She doesn't. <laughs> What are you dreaming? 
Tell me. No, I can't tell you. You're dreaming that you love me. And you do love me, Lorenzi. It's true. You're not just dreaming. You're awake. And I'm holding you in my arms. No, no. You long to be No, no, please let me go. Lorenzo. You're free to go. The door is open. I... I didn't lock it. Nothing is... Nothing is keeping you from going. Only your eyes. Look into my eyes. Your eyes. No, no, it's important, Joseph. But you said the door was unlocked. I want to see you, Joseph. I don't see nobody. I told you that. It's the Montaigne. The Montaigne? The Montaigne with a lady. Don't come. Don't come! Why do you want to leave me? Where do you want to go? Where is it you want to go? To Zubia. Hmm? Always Zubia. Always your bear. Madame. We find this room unpleasantly crowded, Count. Saraida. Tano. Saraida. Saraida. Allow me to introduce Count Cagliostro. Madame. Countess de Berry. My poor house is glorified by your presence. Where is this woman who looks like the Austrian baggage? She's right behind you. Marie Antoinette, it's unbelievable. You sent for me, Joseph? Yes. But you didn't. Yes, madame. In a way, I did. Very well, Lorenzo. You may go back to your room. Yes, Joseph. I'm half afraid. You'd have more cause if the double weren't so perfect. We'll bring her to my house in the closed carriage tonight. I'm afraid not, madame. What? This woman is ill. She needs my help. And so do you. Are you trying to threaten us? I'm merely pointing out that you have acquired a new partner in this little intrigue, whether you like it or not. I like you. You'll do well at court. At court, madame. There's a special reception in honor of the Paris Faculty of Medicine. Your name has been included. And shall I have the honor of seeing the real Marie Antoinette? You can't very well miss her. She sees to that. Really, Monsieur Prophet? You ask a great many questions for one who's supposed to read the future. But I can read the future, Vicomte, and the words are very clear. Well, since you insist on being a partner, I think it only fair to tell you that we're gambling for the highest stakes of all, as high as the throne of France. You need me for that. You need Lorenza. That's why I've come to you. Oh, King Louis loves me well enough. The whole world knows that. He'd marry me tomorrow, except for this prayer reciting Austrian daughter-in-law of his, who stands in the way like an accusing statue. I've talked, I've screamed, but she can twist him round her fingers like so much thread. But if we can discredit Marie Antoinette, if we can get enough pitch to stick to her royal skirts... Using the double, of course. That's all you need to know for the moment. We'll talk again later at the palace. With the stakes as high as they are, madame, we three can arrange anything. Have a 
Having made himself a vital link in this palace conspiracy, Cagliostro's great ambition was achieved. His presentation to the most glittering court in Europe, always a master of theatrical effect, he had adorned his court costume with mystic symbols and insignia stolen from secret fraternal societies. which might induce your grandfather to marry her. Surely, my dear, you don't believe in any of this nonsense about witchcraft. His Majesty Louis the Fifteenth, the King of France, and the Countess du Barry. Who is this gentleman? It is Count Cagliostro, Louis. All Paris is talking about him. Oh, of course we have heard of him. Chirigalek, Chevaloi, Tournoi. What is this? Chabala, mere shadow never grow less. I have given you my blessing, Majesty, as I have blessed your ancestors for centuries. My ancestors? Oh, yes, I knew your great, great, great grandfather pleasantly well. You must be older than you seem. I am uh, older than the pyramids, Majesty, but in somewhat better condition. <laughs> <laughs> the medical faculty is resenting your presence at court. I believe they are planning to discredit you. I will survive it. Your Majesty. We are honored tonight by the presence of the renowned healer, Count Cagliostro. And so, knowing your majesty's insistence upon fair consideration in all the matters concerning the health of your subjects, we have taken it upon ourselves to provide a few, shall we say, guinea pigs to test his powers. This will be vastly entertaining. My dear Carl, the stage is all yours. Here we have all the afflictions of Job from rheumatism to paralysis. You may cure each case individually, but I feel sure our guests would prefer something a little less tedious. Yes, kill them all at once, monsieur. Kill them all at once. <laughs> that is your majesty's command. We're agog with impatience, Carl. Madame, a king I might keep waiting, but a lady never. By the red star of Ephesus and the jeweled hand of Copther, I will command you now to throw away your crutches and to rise from your sick beds. No need for that. One glance from you and we are already cured. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,
Joseph. Mm. Now they laugh us out of Europe. Yes, with a trick and have a double edge, like a sword blade. <laughs> Most remarkable achievement. <laughs> My dear Count, we, the physicians of Paris, have met our master. <laughs> Your Majesty, there's one little matter they all forget. If I can cure, I can also afflict. I can also afflict. You. You are the leader of the dance. Down on your knees. Down on your knees. Down on your knees. You'd like to rise, but you cannot. You cannot rise. The truth is remarkably rich for a beggar. If you'll excuse me, sir. What was your disease? It was supposed to be paralysis, monsieur. Supposed to be? It is. You are paralyzed. Even now, as I speak, you can feel the strength ebbing out of their limbs. Their legs are like wax. Soft, melting wax. You're a cripple. Now, cripple! Crawl! Crawl! Crawl, crawl! Now listen, you fool. There's nothing wrong with you. Give me your hand. Leap to your feet. And think twice before you mock again the sufferings of humanity. Go. Amazing, incredible. This man is far more than a charlatan. I believe it's the devil himself. Very amusing, monsieur. You turn the tables most effectively. You see, your majesty, there's nothing whatever wrong with the young man except the ailments that afflict the doctors who arrange this little deception. Fear, hypocrisy, and stupidity. And those are incurable, even for me. Madame, such an honor. You brought the necklace? Indeed, madame. A really exquisite piece of craftsmanship. Magnificent. Truly fit for a queen, madame. Thank you, monsieur. I created it for the Princess Marie Antoinette. Stones were chosen with particular regard for the whiteness of her royal shoulders. We're not discussing her shoulders. What is the price? One million, madame. One million? Very little, considering his perfection. I know the princess would buy it without hesitation, but with such dire poverty in Paris. The princess will buy the necklace, Thelma. She will, madame? I think I can promise that you will receive a visit from her. Incognito, of course, within a few days. But the money, monsieur... I assure you, everything has been arranged. Secretly. Thank you, monsieur. That's all. Madame? Excellency. 
And now what remains is very simple. Madame du Barry will provide the funds. And you, Cagliostro, have merely to see that Lorenza, impersonating Marie Antoinette, buys the necklace from the jeweler. And to be sure that the people of France learn that Marie Antoinette is spending one million francs of their money. Let the news flash through Paris, down through the dice houses and servant halls, down into the slums, until the people come out howling in their hunger and their hate. The necklace will be found in her rooms before she can make any denials, and the king will be forced to banish her in order to avoid the bloodshed. Is that what you see in the future, Cagliostro? I see bloodshed from the new queen of France. A new queen. Do you see anything else? I see a new minister to the king in the most important position of all. The minister of finance. Who is it? Whom do you see, Cagliostro? I see a tall man with a scar on his left hand. Lorenza! Lorenza! Cagliostro had Lorenza under his hypnotic spell again, and out of the convent where Gilbert had placed her for protection. This time he made certain no one could take her from him. Then I do, by the powers vested in me by the Holy Father in Rome, and by the laws of the Kingdom of France, pronounce you man and wife. And may God bless you both. is waiting for you a long time. She wants to talk to you. I talked to no one. I've told you that before. But she came in one of the king's own coaches. Go home, my darling. Take Lorenzo home. Madame Dubarry brought news that was to stun all of Europe. King Louis had been stricken with apoplexy. The king is dying. He's surrounded by doctors, killing him with their administrations. But you could save him, monsieur. You've got to save him. I'll do my best. No one I can trust now. Not even De Montaigne. De Montaigne? If Louis dies, De Montaigne will run with the stream. Oh, I know it. He's already bowing and scraping to that Austrian woman. But Louis mustn't die. Come with me to the palace now. Be quick. Every minute counts. and look in the mine. 
Open your eyes. Open your eyes, Louis. He can save you if you'll open your eyes. Well, Mr. Sorcerer, can you raise the dead? He can! He will! He can! Louis, open your eyes! Madam Dewberry, your grief has been duly noted by all present, and you are hereby banished from Paris. You will please leave the palace by morning. Even one night in the Nostrum possession is too much for a true Frenchwoman, Your Majesty. I'll have my coach made ready at once. You insolent fishwife. And you, Monsieur Gypsy. Gypsy? You have one week to cross our frontier. Your Majesty, it will be more than sufficient for my purposes. here at the cafe, but I never expected to find you here alone. What's that? What, what are you celebrating? King is dead. What? Long live the king. Oh, so the old king died. Mm. When, Joseph? Just now, before I left the palace. Sit down. Seven days are one week. One, two, one, two, three. Seven days, seven days are one week is just what Her Majesty has allowed us to leave the country. Bambino, Bambino. And you, Itano, look, look there. Tell me what you see. Well, our house, of course. In my house and in my power, there is a girl who is the image of the new queen. You see a carriage stopping near the door? Yes. That should be our old friend, the Vicomte de Montaigne, paying us a call. He does not hope to find us in. I stayed away in order to encourage him, but see? The hand is quicker than the eye. Come, Itano. Where's the master? What do you want? The king's minister to see your master. I'm sorry, Count Carleo throws out. In a week, he'll be out of friends. We've come for the girl. If he thinks he'll take her with him, he's very much mistaken. Where is she? The girl, what do you mean? Would this clarify matters? Too late, monsieur. What are you up to now? Lorenz is dead. Obviously, suicide. She stays with you for burial. I wouldn't trust her with you above ground. I'll arrange for the burial of the chapel. No, she's a suicide. She has no right to sacred ground. Besides, no one else must know. Have a grave dug in your garden at once.
Wake up, Lorenzo. Lorenzo, speak to me. Lorenzo. I had a dream. Yes? I dreamed we were home together. We... We were home together? No. No. Who was in your dream? Gilbert. All right, all right, you love him. It's Gilbert. You've known she's loved him all along. You can make a slave out of her. You can control her mind, but you cannot make a woman love you when she loves another. Don't say it! You know what I see in your eyes, Bambino? Are you trying to do read my fortune? Let's see. Hmm? I see no. murder. All right, Joseph. Hmm? Then kill. Kill! Kill her! Oh, no. She's killing you. She's now in the grave, Bambino. Leave her there. Leave her. No. Leave no. her there. No. Number one, the Vicomte de Montaigne. Why do I hate him, Hitano? Because he, he hanged your mother and father. Number two, the Chevalier de Rancin, our gallant little Gilbert. Number two, why do I hate him? Because Lorenza loves him. Because she thinks she does. And here is the new queen of France, number three. Why do the people hate their new queen? Because the poor and hungry people are going to see their new queen with the most costly diamonds in the world glittering on her throat. A necklace paid for with their own money. You mean the Burma necklace? The Burma necklace. Tonight, Itano, I've been exploring. Hmm. On my way here from the palace, I made a little expedition into the slums of Paris. The people are desperate. A skillful leader could turn this country, hey, presto, upside down. And so, through his love for one woman and his hate for one man, and driven by his unbridled ambition, Cagliostro set in motion a diabolic plot that was to rock the very throne of France. Why wait, Gaston, now? What is it, man? It wasn't there before, my lord. What wasn't there before? On the stand, by the wing. The royal seal. How did it get here? I don't know, my lord. Is it? From Marie Antoinette. The Queen? Must be a trap. No, perhaps not. From the Queen? <laughs> no man can have a secret from his valet. It seems she likes me, Gaston. She wants me to meet her in the Bois de Boulogne. My wig, Gaston. Is that the royal carriage? No, but she would hardly dare. Of course not. Lorenzo. Lorenzo, look. The Vicomte de Montaigne. He saw you buried in the grave, so now he must believe that you are the Queen of France. You are, Lorenzo. You are the Queen of France. Watch closely. If any attempt is made on my life, shoot to kill. Yes, my lord. Your majesty. Not on your knees before me. But this great honor. It's monsieur. I am a woman. Majesty. Your lips have a kindness I never dreamed they can wear. The queen has to play a part. Command whatever you will. Even a queen cannot command love. Love? Do you love me, madame? Would I be here now if I didn't?
Give me your hand, monsieur. Never lose it. For that ring is my heart. It will always live next to mine. What can I give in return? Very little. Two small things. Ask anything. Then come to my apartments tomorrow at midnight. The guards will be withdrawn. I'll be waiting for you. And the other? As proof of your love for me, if you love me, bring me the diamond necklace from the vaults of Burma, the jeweler. The necklace? It would cost a million francs. What is a million francs to the king's minister when it means the queen's happiness? But, madame, you are the queen and you know if I use public funds, I can die. You cannot die, monsieur. Not while I am the queen. Tomorrow night, then. At midnight. A new servant. The Paris mob stormed Burma's jewelry shop, aroused to fury by the story Cagliostro had spread through the slums. That de Montaigne had bought the necklace for Marie Antoinette with funds from the public treasury. <laughs> Monsieur le Capitaine, there's a lady to see you. She said that it's urgent, sir, and that her name is Lorenza. Lorenza? Thank you, sir. Hey. He's coming. Gilbert, huh? What are you going to do with him? Well, when our precious de Montaigne is caught in the real queen's antechamber, Gilbert must be trapped with him. Trapped? Yes. And Lorenza is the bait. Yes, Gilbert will believe anything Lorenza tells him, and she... She will say anything I will have to say. Lorenza. Gilbert. What's happened? He made me pretend I was the Queen of France. The Queen? Then he sent me to see Viscount de Montaigne. And tonight de Montaigne is going to the Queen's apartments, taking her the Burma necklace. The Burma necklace? It's a plot to ruin de Montaigne, to ruin the Queen. And I thought that you could save us all. You can ruin the court, Gilbert. Tonight at midnight, de Montaigne will come alone through the antechamber. You could stop him at the Queen's own door. There are lives at stake, Gilbert. Mine is only one of them. While at the palace, the Vicomte de Montaigne started out to keep what he believed was a romantic tryst with the young queen. Saving your honor and your life. And I am taking your servant. Your Majesties. Oh, the thieves seem to have fallen out. Thieves, sire. Oh, we were warned that you would both come here tonight. The guards were withdrawn to let you pass. Your Majesty. I'm bewildered. I'm, I'm... You seem to have lost your power of speech, my dear minister. 
Perhaps the captain can reply more easily. What are you doing here? I... I cannot tell you, sire. Someone else is involved. Someone... I thought I loved very dearly. So you choose to be mysterious? What is your report? Sire, the Vicomte de Montaigne came stealthily into the antechamber. He was met by the captain who demanded a necklace. He speaks of a necklace, monsieur. Where is it? Inconceivable. De Montaigne, a thief. Worse than that, a traitor. It's the Count Cagliostro, sir. Your Majesty sent for me. I did not, Monsieur. Majesty, waves of thought travel faster than any messenger. I believe you need my help. Your Majesty, don't listen to him. I see it all now. He planned it to ruin me, to ruin you. Is it true that you can read my mind? Madame, like the pages of a book. Then it should come as no surprise to you to hear that you are under arrest. All three of you. And the charges? Treason against the throne of France. To some, it might have seemed that by encouraging his own arrest, Cagliostro had put his neck beneath the headsman's axe. But the game was going exactly as he had planned it. Cagliostro still knew that he had dealt himself all the trumps. Hey! Anything wrong here? Tell him. Everything is all right. to a pair of harmless wandering gypsies. You hang them, hang them before their son's eyes. My eyes, the eyes that hold you helpless now, do you remember? Do you? Do you? I remember. Let the memory live with you tonight. Sleep, de Martin. Sleep and dream of the rope tightening about my mother's neck. Then you will know what you must do. The rope, the mountain. The choking rope. Your blanket. Your blanket torn in streams will do as well. The rope. The choking rope. Majesties, the Minister of Justice and the Crown Prosecutor request an audience. Admit them. Louis, you heard? Oh, what's that, my turtle? The Minister of Justice and the Prosecutor are here. Oh, will you stop meddling with that ridiculous clock? Oh, I'm not meddling, dear. I'm just trying to fix the cuckoo so his poor little tail feathers won't get hurt. A lot more than my tail feathers will get hurt unless my good name is cleared. Your Majesties. Your Majesties. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. You have news? Yes, madame. Vicomte de Montaigne hanged himself in his cell last night. Without making any confession, of course. Exactly, madame. Our one hope of forcing the truth from him died with him. His accomplice, Sean Barr, has escaped to England. And now the troublemakers are busy telling the people that de Montaigne died rather than expose your part in this affair, madame. 
You see, Louis? But I told the people in a proclamation that their queen had no part in this affair. I am afraid that many of them don't believe you, Your Majesty. But that's impossible, Monsieur. They must believe their king, or where are we? Precisely, Louis, where are we? It's beyond me, Mary. You take care of it. Then there is no hope of proving this conspiracy against me? There is still hope, Your Majesty. With your permission, bring in the two women. This is Madame Cagliostro. We owe our thanks to the gypsy girl for discovering her hidden in a secret room in Cagliostro's house. Why are you informing against him? Because I love him, and he once loved me, madame. I see. Why is she veiled? For her and your protection, majesty, while driving through the streets, as you will see. Gypsy, lift her veil. Incredible. I might be looking in the mirror. She's so like me. It is evident that Cagliostro made her impersonate your majesty in order to deceive de Montaigne. It's hard to believe that this girl would stoop to anything so infamous. It seems, madame, that the girl is truly innocent at heart. She is, your majesty. Cagliostro has a strange power to make people act against their will. My dear, all France is in danger of an explosion because of this conspiracy in which you were used. Would you save me and the throne of France if you could? Oh, gladly, your majesty. But would you be prepared to appear in court as a witness for the crown and testify against Cagliostro? Oh, yes, of course. Then you have no love for this man you married? I loathe him, Your Majesty. Even our marriage was no wish of mine. But when he talks to me and looks in my eyes, my will leaves me and I'm helpless. He will be in the courtroom. Do you feel strong enough now to face him and tell what he did? Yes, I'm sure I can. I must, not only for France, but to save Gilbert de Ransen, the man I love. Cagliostro had not underrated his popularity. The people came swarming out of the slums. With Paris as the tinderbox, France teetered on the very edge of bloody revolution. It seemed that Cagliostro had only to win the trial, and nothing could stop his seizing supreme power over all of France. And my lords, justices, I propose to produce evidence which I am convinced will satisfy this court that a vile conspiracy has been hatched against the people of France and against the Queen's Majesty. And so, by the powers vested in me by His Most Sacred Majesty King Louis XVI, I hereby charge these two wicked men with treason against the most exalted person of Marie Antoinette, Queen of France. Monsieur le Président, the prosecution is prepared to present its evidence. Let the prisoner come forward. The Chevalier de Rincin. Monsieur, you have heard the indictment. Are you prepared to plead guilty, or do you wish to reserve your defense? I have nothing to say, my lord. You understand what course we must take if you persist in a policy of silence? I understand, my lord. Chevalier has nothing to say. Let the second prisoner come forward. The Count Cagliostro. Count Cagliostro, we presume you have nothing to say either. Is that a statement or a question? <laughs> I merely point out that the Queen wishes this case concluded by nightfall. It would pain me very much to counter Her Majesty's wishes, but it would also pain me very much to lose my head. <laughs> Levity is hardly in keeping with the gravity of this case. Come, come, Astro. My lord, I intend to prove my innocence. Have you counsel? No, I shall defend myself, and I will prove out of the mouths of any witnesses the prosecutor may produce that the Vicomte de Montaigne purchased the necklace now glittering in its case before this court, not to bring Her Majesty into shame and infamy, but to bring her into his arms! <laughs> That 
man must die. Monsieur, you have forfeited all hope of clemency from this court unless you can indeed prove your vicious words. The prosecutor may produce his witnesses. My lord, in view of the prisoner's slanderous insinuations and his boast that he can prove his own innocence out of our witnesses' mouths, we propose to present only one, the most important of all. And to that end, I call the Countess Cagliostro. The Countess Cagliostro. And now, madam, you are the Countess Cagliostro. The wife of the prisoner, Cagliostro. I am, monsieur. Thank you, madame. Lift your veil. Oui. An amazing resemblance, my lords. The very image of Her Majesty the Queen. Is it not true that the prisoner sitting there, the Count Cagliostro, your own husband, compelled you to impersonate the sacred person of the Queen. Answer me! Madame, the court is waiting. We insist on the truth. I know nothing, monsieur. Oh, the woman's lying. This is an outrage. Outrage, yes. But it's not the witness who is lying, it's the prosecution. Silence! It's not the witness who stands here accused. Silence! Nor is it I. I'm Kelly Astro. You will resume your seat. The witness is not only my wife. She is my patient. She's ill. Dangerously ill. I ask for a recess. I object. Surely it's not much to ask for from a husband and a doctor. My lord, the prisoner has a very strange influence over this woman. And just as strange an influence over the mob. My wife is ill. Ill! I plead for a recess. I demand! Oh, I demand! Oh, well, this is a court of law. Court of law? Whose law? Your law? For the queens? What is dispensed here? Justice or vengeance? Is this a trial? Or an inquisition? The court is resist! The court is resist! Clear the court! Order! Get the law into the street! She'll be quite herself in a moment. Sleep, my darling. Sleep. Sleep. Till I, and only I, awaken you. They thought they could force you to destroy me. But they failed. As they will fail in everything. For I'll tear down this royal house of cards, the queen and all the others, and set up a new dynasty with you as my queen. Please, Joseph. Please, there may still be a chance for you to escape. Escape? From what? Here, the Mitano, in the courtroom. Street outside, in hovels and in palaces, they're all mine to play God with. Play God with, I say. Joseph, you are mad. Hey, Joseph! Joseph! You can't mean what you're saying. Why not? Why else have I this power? This power. No, 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 Joseph. Those are the lies you told the others. Lies? Perhaps not. The Lord God came to the world once before us, man. Perhaps this time he will remold that world to his own liking. Joseph. Take your hands away from me. Joseph, you're mad. Take your hands away from me. 
Monsieur, the court is reconvened. That won't help us, Gitano. It's the only thing that might save his mind. It's too late for that. Nothing can save him now. My Lord Justices, I will now prove to this court that I am not the instigator of a conspiracy, but the victim of one. Gilbert Rancin, you have to now refuse to say one word in your own defense. And you know why, Cagliostro. A woman's good name, isn't that it? You will answer now, as I want you to answer. I don't understand this power of yours, Cagliostro, but you can't bend me to your will. You can't bend me to your will. It is your will I seek to arouse. Your will to answer my questions. To speak out, no matter whom it hurts. It has been stated that I made my wife impersonate the Queen. You know that to be a lie. I know that to be a lie. You will speak up. I know that to be a lie. The woman whose name you are trying to protect is the Queen of France. Queen of France. This is monstrous. There must be some way to stop this witch, Doctor. It was the Queen herself who induced the Montaigne to purchase the necklace out of public funds. It was the Queen herself. And you are to kill that poor, wretched, power-sick fool, the Montaigne. Kill him and take the necklace to the Queen. In return for which, you are to have the Queen's love. You are to have the Queen's love. I... Was to have the Queen's love. There you have it at last, my lords! Out of his own mouth! My coach. Your Majesty, my name is Dr. Mesmer. I've come to help you, to save you. It's not too late. Please, Your Majesty, trust me. Nothing can stop me! Because I was born not only to heal the sick, but to guide and to lead and to rule! And nothing can stop those that follow me. Good evening, Joseph. My Lord Justice, with your permission, an interrogation will be made by a distinguished visitor who has volunteered to assist the case for the Crown. I present Dr. Franz Anton Mesmer. My Lord Justice, the Count Cagliostro and I are very old friends, isn't that correct? We spent one evening together, Doctor. Yes. It was long enough for you to learn a great deal, wasn't it, Joseph? I learned much, Doctor. Too much to be trapped by your eyes. Of course. You learned much, Joseph. And you profited much by what you have learned. Isn't that correct, Joseph? My Lord Justice, with your kind permission, I'd like to ask the defendant a few questions in connection with this This necklace. Beautiful, isn't it? Joseph, beautiful, isn't it? Joseph. Very beautiful. I don't see what that has to do with me. But a great deal to do with you, my friend. It fascinates you. It fascinates you, it fascinates you. Like the Baron's money fascinated you. Your gaze is locked upon its beauty. You can't take your eyes off it. Try as you may, Joseph. You can't take your eyes away from it. You can't take your eyes away from it, poor Joseph. If you only stayed a little longer with me, you would have known that there are other ways to catch and hold a mind. You are finished, Joseph. You are finished. Your mind is like wet, soft, 
melting wax, soft melting wax. My lord, people of Paris, this man is guilty of every charge levelled against him. Is that true? It is true. You were Joseph Balsamo, Carnival Fakir, is that true? Joseph Balsamo, Carnival Fakir. As a child, you hated the Vicomte de Montaigne, is that true? I hated him. So your hatred grew into a mania against all people in high places. That is true. That is true. Uh, you dragged the woman you loved into a villainous plot to defend the Queen of France. Is that true? I will have made Lorenzo Queen of France. Speak up! I will have made Lorenzo Queen of France. For you betrayed the people that believed in you. Clan took power across the banks. Power! Power! In your madness, you thought you could rule the world! Power! Is that true? I can still do it! Out of his own mouth! You heard it! Out of his own mouth! Fight me. You can't fight my eyes. I'm looking at your sword point. 